Hey folks, Ariel over here. As you can probably tell from the last few videos, what I'm doing is working on getting the rest of everything out of the garden before things freeze really solid here. And today, what I'm doing is digging up the rest of the potatoes. At least if there's not a kitten completely in the way. I don't even know where she was. The minute I sat down here, she shows up. This is why she's named Velcro. Um, anyhow. I did not get a good potato crop this year, I think for a whole host of reasons, um, but I did get some, which is more than I thought I might get. So what I am doing today is digging them. Um, let me address real quick a couple things. Do you have to get them out of the ground before winter? Depends on your winter. Not necessarily. Uh, even in places with snow, I'm also, while I go pulling out anything like those very, very nasty grass roots, I hate grass. It's my least favorite, uh, yeah, why don't you go chase it? Least favorite weed in the garden. Um, so I am removing, here, here, this is for you. Come here. Um, least favorite weed to compete with. But I, I am getting some. So this is not by any means a spectacular harvest. It's probably the worst potato harvest I've ever had. So this is a poor one to decide to show as an illustration. But to, you can dig potatoes anytime, um, as soon as they start growing actual potatoes under the ground. The plant can still be green and bushy. Those are usually called new potatoes, and you can dig them up if you're going to eat them in the very near future. They don't store well at that point. If you want them to store, you want to let them go till all the plant is dead. Um, as you can see, this all looks brown. This is, you know, I can, I can just see the remnants of the dried up potato plants um, that are still there. And they don't have to be quite that dead, but the plant needs to be fully brown, yellow brown, and big commercial fields sometimes if, they, if they're not dying fast enough for when they want to harvest. See, there's a really nice one. Um, they might actually spray Roundup on the whole field to kill the rest because uh, they, you want the nutrients um, that are up in those leaves to get sucked down into the potatoes themselves like this. And, and to have them kind of start to, to seal up to be prepared to sit through a winter, because that's what's going to make them store well. My potatoes, of course, I am not spraying with Roundup or any other kind of chemical. They die back quite naturally on their own when the plant is ready to do so, and in my area they're even sometimes hastened a little bit by the frost. Though, you know, once they're getting toward the end of their life, the potato leaves are somewhat frost hardy, but at some point they do start to die with or without freezes, with or without any chemicals, and when they're, you know, fully dead and at least all yellow, if not all brown and crunchy like that one I just showed you, that is when the plant is actually ready to, you know, store all the nutrients in those roots for a whole year, which helps them last much longer if you want to store them. So that's what you're going for. The plant to have died back I highly recommend letting it do so naturally, and if you're in a place where you do get frosts and freezes, that may speed up the end of the process just a little bit. Um, so the best ones I've gotten are about like that. I've also got a bunch this size, which isn't that great. Um, but anyway, to, if, you're, if you're harvesting them to store, you do want them to be, the plant to be fully dead. And if you, what I was saying before Velcro distracted me, was if you live in a place where your ground does not freeze so solid and isn't buried under so much snow that you could still get to it through the winter. Some people put like a, a hay or straw bale right on top of that area, or if they pick it up, the ground's still defrosted and you can dig things out then. You could just leave them right in the soil until you want them lift up your straw bale, dig out a few as you need them. It gets too cold and too snowy here for that. Our ground freezes generally very deep and I'd have to move a ton of snow to get to them. So I'm um, getting them out of the ground and picking out rocks occasionally as I go. But you do want, again, you can eat them if you're, if you're gonna eat them in the very near future while the, top, you know, the tops, and by that I mean every part that's above the soil uh, because half the potato plant is under the soil when they're still green, but they will not tend to store well. There is some more grass roots. Um, but you want to be careful when you're digging right around, like I can see a plant here, and now if I had a good harvest, I would probably be able to dig right under there and find a whole bunch of potatoes. As it is, when I dig right under where I can see a plant was, I'm not 
finding that many. I'm only getting a couple per plant, but again, I thought at one point I might get none, so that's all right. And every now and then as you dig right under a plant, you'll find this, if I can show you. You see this mushy, mushy um, potato? That was the one that was originally planted that the rest of the plant grew from. Sometimes they've so totally disintegrated that I can't even find them. I've got so many earthworms in here, it's wonderful. There's two more just in that handful. Um, because it's given all its nutrients to the, the plant that grew. But if you find that right in the middle where you dig up a plant, uh, don't worry, it's not one of your, you know, potatoes you were trying to grow, like this that's gone bad. It was the, the parent potato that gave all of its starch and energy to the new plant. And sometimes there's that little mushy, slimy remains of it left. So just be aware that's something. I usually just leave it here. It'll break down back into the rest of the soil, or you can throw it in the compost, whatever you like. But you might run into those. The other thing is if you, again, if you're wanting them to store and keep, because potatoes can, they can be just fine from now till next spring. And that's a lot of months away for me. Um, is you don't want to damage them in any way. So I'm, you see I'm kind of lifting the soil and you still, you're always gonna nick some or spear some or cut some, but you don't want to damage them. And you also don't want to bang them on anything hard. I mean, you have to treat these close to like eggs. Now they're not so fragile once they cure a little bit. When you first pull them out of, of the ground, Again, if you, if you bruise them and you're going to eat them tonight, big whoop, it's not going to matter. But if, you're, if you bruise them and you want them to last for six months, they will almost invariably spoil. So this soft ground that I've just turned over is a nice place to set them till I, uh, you know, put them over there in my crate when I hop back on the other side of the bed. But I'm kind of just lifting the soil and, and then crumbling it through my fingers to find wherever the potatoes themselves are. And I'm not throwing them, I'm not banging them, not running them into each other, and any that you do stab or cut, they'll be fine for a little bit. I just try to put those in a, in a separate basket and, and use them first. Um, but the undamaged ones will store pretty well. I've, well, we finished them by then, but I've had them last the whole way through, through spring. That's a nice size rock, not a potato. Um, anyway, so, you could easily expect off of one plant, if you had any kind of decent harvest, to get a pile, you know, three or four times this big off of one plant, and I'm getting nothing like that. So, so don't go on this for what you should expect a harvest to actually look like, but the, the general method is still the same. Um, some people dig them up with a spading fork. Um, if your soil is soft enough, often I in my old garden I could just go through it with just my hands and that makes it easier to not uh, bruise or cut anything. This soil has a little much clay in it still and not quite enough organic material so it's a little bit stiff for that. That's why I'm using this as well to help me lift that soil so that I can find all the potatoes. But anyway that's basically how you harvest potatoes and um, you don't, also you'll notice when I, when I get one, I'm kind of crumbling the extra soil off of it, but I'm not washing them and I'm not going to until whatever day I'm actually ready to, to cook them into something. Um, they seem to, there seems to be some disagreement about that. That's what I've been doing since I was a little, little kid. And there definitely seems to be some thought that, I don't know if it's just the extra handling and bruising that happens in the process of washing them or if that dirt seal on them helps protect them but either way typically they're not washed when you're wanting to store them you can of course wash them when you um you know before you go to eat them let's see if we can find another one right there was another plant and another grass root but again i don't want to be throwing these in here i want to pick them up carefully and set them in with their friends and, you know, they're not quite as fragile as handling eggs, but if you think of it like handling eggs, there's a nice one, then you won't damage them. So that's all I do. And then something like a crate like this, a box, um, something where there can be some air circulation tends to be good for storing them. And potatoes like to be somewhere 
damp and cool, not frozen. Um, if you freeze a potato, as soon as it defrosts, it will turn into kind of a, a slimy mush. You could possibly use it instantly, but if it freezes and thaws while you're storing it, they will go bad, um, for sure. And there's one I managed to slice halfway into with my little fork. So he's gonna go over here separate because he needs used first. Um, if you have something like an actual root cellar, that is wonderful um, for storing potatoes. When I was growing up, where my parents stored them was what we called the well pit. Uh, wells are not generally made with well pits anymore, but they had one that was this, you know, kind of concrete box that went down underground and the well head was down in there so it couldn't freeze. And we just stacked, I actually put potatoes in the exact same kind of thing. My grandparents and parents both stacked a whole ton of those old milk crates full of potatoes up along all the walls inside there and you know every few weeks through the winter when you needed some more you'd go pull one crate out of the well pit and bring it into the house where you could then more easily get to them but that just stayed above freezing because it was underground and damp in there because of the well if it's if they're somewhere that's too dry um, they'll kind of start to dehydrate and you don't want them also sitting in moisture or they will mold. Uh, I obviously do not currently have a good root cellar. That's definitely in our plans to create at some point, but can't do everything at once. Um, so where have I actually stored potatoes over the past years? I've uh, kept them under the sink. That's kind of the coolest corner of the tiny house uh, because it's the furthest away from the, the stove and near the water tank and so on. That is not ideal. They don't last as long there as they would in some areas. Um, I've also kept some in, my landlord's had a, had a big shop and it was kept heated just enough to be above freezing and they didn't mind if I stacked a few crates in the back corner of that. Um, so that worked as well for a while. The other thing you don't want them to do is get light. When light hits a potato, it'll start to turn green. Uh, it's a, a process going on in the cells where they're creating chlorophyll and something called solanin, I believe that's how you pronounce it, that is mildly toxic to people. So you don't want to let all your potatoes sit somewhere in the light. Now if they're not actually like underground or in a root cellar, you can keep them in the dark by throwing a tarp, a blanket, a dark colored sheet over them, putting them in a closet and closing the door, you know, all kinds of things. You just don't want them sitting in direct sunlight. And if you get a little bit of green on them, I've always been perfectly comfortable trimming that off and still eating it. Some people I think discard the whole potato um, I've never found that to be necessary, but I don't eat the, the actual green card that goes back in the compost to go back in the garden to <laughs> in little goofballs to raise more potatoes. So hopefully if you've actually grown some potatoes, this is uh, helpful if you're wanting to harvest them and be able to store them for any length of time. And that is the tips that I've learned over the years generally works pretty well for me. So I've just got the rest of this little end of the bed to go through and the rest of that end of the bed. And I have some great garden companions. Um, hey, you know you're not allowed to put your feet in the garden beds. Beep, beep. Yeah, yeah, you can play, but you, you are supposed to keep your feet out of the garden beds. Yeah, I know she's mean and swats at you. <laughs> they really are fun to watch together. So when we were all done harvesting, I ended up with about a crate and a half full of potatoes, which is a long way from the 200 pounds that I grew last year in the same amount of space, but a pretty decent harvest for what they were this year. Well, over here at Fineth, thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.